Right then guys, here we go again. Welcome to the third part, the final part of our PEE Valentine special and learning to love PEE. We're on to the explain section, the most important bit in some ways, although it's not, is it? Because if your point's no good, then that's, your paragraph's not gonna be much good. If your evidence is no good, all of them are important, isn't it? But this is a bit where if you can get it right, you can really show off. You can really um, push the level of sophistication that you're showing. Right. Explanation then. What should be in a good explanation? Well, first of all, you need to explain how your quotation supports your point. So you should be writing about both your point and your evidence. How does what you've chosen for, ex for evidence help you to support your point? You need to interpret your evidence, write about it, explain what it means, explain how it answers the question. And link back to the point, link back to the title. So, example of how we might do this, we've got our quotation from the previous two films, or, or our PE paragraph so far. One striking feature of Blenny's presentation in chapter one is Steinbeck's use of physical description. For example, the first image of Blenny we get as he enters the, uh, enters the scene. Oh look, did I mention that before? I'm not sure I did. There's an example of introducing your quote. Okay, like I mentioned before. Just show it, telling, explaining what's going on at this point. Anyway is of a huge man, shapeless of face, with large pale eyes. Right, this shows us, here's the explanation bit. This shows us that he is huge, with a shapeless face and pale eyes. What do you think about that? Have a moment to think about that. Is that any good? Not really. Why? Because all he's doing is repeating the, the quotation, isn't it? It's just, it's not even really putting the quotation in your, his own words. It's just saying it again, but not in quote marks. Okay, so that's not really what we're after. Not a lot of sophistication there. You need to interpret the quote, which says, which means saying what you think it means and why you think it's important. Kind of drawing out meaning from the quote without just stating it again. So, better example, same quote. Uh, this shows us that he is physically large, but also that he may not be intelligent or alert. Now that's better, isn't it? That's have started to develop a bit of an interpretation there. You need to go on and justify that, but nevertheless, that's a much better start to your explain section. But it needs more, doesn't it? Because you haven't really said why or how that is achieved. You need to justify what you're saying there, um, because why doesn't it show he's intelligent or alert? I suppose that's the bit that is questionable, isn't it? So, how do you do that? Well, you do that through your explanation plus, your more explanation, your added, kind of developed, sophisticated uh, explanation. This is your opportunity to show off and be sophisticated and creative in the analysis, in the points that you make. This is the bit where, you know, nobody can tell you that you're wrong here, as long as you're, you're discussing the evidence in a reasonably convincing way, and you've thought about it, the way to do really well in this bit is to say things to your examiner or to the person reading your essay that they've not already thought about before. So it's trying to show sort of originality, um, development and sophistication of those things. So show off and be creative. Secondly, right, really crucial, this is an opportunity to comment on the effect of power words. Comment on the effect of key words from the quotation and maybe techniques. So uh, if you're doing drama, you might use this to comment on the effect of, I don't know, um, soliloquy or imagery or something like that. Stagecraft, if you're doing poetry, you might comment here about poetic devices, um, use of metaphor or onomatopoeia or any of those sorts of things. Thirdly, you might make reference to your reader. How does it affect the reader? Fourthly, you can link to other characters and other themes in the novel. In this, but You don't have to do all of this, by the way. These are some of the things that you might do. You wouldn't do all of them for every paragraph. By fifthly, you might link this to the social and historical context of whatever you're writing about, so when and where it was set and how that helps us to understand the quotation in a bit more detail, or more clearly. And finally, you might suggest alternative interpretations. Just because you're saying this about Of Mice and Men, you're not suggesting that you're the world expert on this and this is definitely the answer to how this might be interpreted. Lots of people read quotations and characters and novels and take different things from it. 
So, you know, um, simply put, you might find George a very sympathetic character in Of Mice and Men. You might really like him um, and think he acts in a really moral way. Or you might not. You might think he is horrible and he should have just kind of run off again with Lenny at the end and not shot him in the back of the head. But it's up to you. Uh, so there's an opportunity to show alternative interpretations. So you can say it might mean this, but it might mean this. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of a bit of explanation plus, which kind of develops the interpretation, proves your point, says how, all these sorts of things. Here we've got our paragraph so far, and then, so we've got also that he may not be intelligent or alert. Okay, the explanation plus comes in with the use of the image, large pale eyes, implies that he's not bright-eyed or quick-witted. So what they're doing is they're picking on a key bit from the quotation, right? They're picking on uh, the power words, like we just looked at um, in the list of things that you should be trying to do, and they're then writing about that. What are the, Im the um, implications? What are the effects of those key words in particular? Now, this student's trying to suggest, I suppose, that um, large pale eyes suggests a sort of dullness, doesn't it? I mean, eyes are really important uh, in, in literature and in characterisation and in knowing people, isn't it, and, and getting on with people. Um, and so they're trying to draw that out. Large pale eyes are places not bright-eyed or quick-witted. Now, of course, that's, that's not, we're getting quite good here now, because we're, we're doing what we need to do. Um, and we're following the point, evidence, explain, and put some more explanation in. You could go on for ages about this. You could write much more. And I, you know, it's not, it's not for your teachers to tell you what to write here. It's just to give you some ideas about the sort of things you might write and how to write about it. Okay, so let's now have a look at a paragraph that does this really well. Um, I'll read this in full because, you know, this is an example of how you might write with a degree of creativity. Um, within the PEE structure. Okay? Um, one striking feature of Lenny's presentation in Chapter 1 is Steinbeck's use of physical description. For example, the first image of Lenny we get as he enters the scene is of a huge man, shapeless of face with large pale eyes. This presents Lenny as physically large, but also that he may not be intelligent or alert. So you see at this point, we've just got standard PEE here. The image shapeless of face is significant, suggesting a possible lack of intelligence or wit. This is emphasised by the comparison with George's restless eyes and sharp, strong features. Furthermore, Steinbeck then draws our attention to the way his arms hung loosely, reinforcing the sense of a man who is physically strong but mentally slow. Now, what's good about that? Well, they're doing all sorts of things, aren't they? They're commenting on the keywords, but they're also drawing comparison with other parts of the text, isn't it? Where did I mention that as... Uh, linked to other characters or themes or ideas within the novel. Is it because they started to write about George and how he's used comparison with George. They've even brought in a little bit of extra quotation in there. It's fine to do that. You don't have to just stick with what you've got here. Um, he then also talks about a different but related point about how his arms are hanging. So it really develops this idea in, in, in quite a creative way, sees it through, this is an example of how you don't need to see point evidence explained, particularly if you're going for the very highest mark, as an absolute straight jacket, P, E, E, finish, P, E, E, finish. In your explanation section, you can improvise a bit, and you can just write about what occurs to you as being most interesting, or most relevant, or a sort of sophisticated, interesting things to say about the quotation. It's actually really enjoyable when you get the hang of doing this, because it's like a little puzzle, isn't it? It's testing your ability to, um, to think of interesting links and, 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 and ways to, to interpret the quotation and write about the language. You can get to a stage, believe me, where you can really enjoy uh, that aspect of, of, of um, English and that aspect of thinking, that way of thinking. This is real analytical thinking. It's exciting when you can get the hang of it. And you can all get the hang of it if you structure yourself in the right way. So, what, uh, to finish off then, useful phrases, some examples, you can use totally different phrases if you want to, but helpful phrases that students have found in the past. Use of the word something suggests or implies that something. So that's a good way to comment on power words. Uh, this reinforces or this amplifies the sense that, I love that one, this amplifies the sense that um, Lenny is physically strong or, or whatever. You know, like an amplifier, it kind of turns up the...
the volume of that idea. Uh, this reminds us of um, the word something has strong connotations of, if you've done, learned about connotations or denotations, it kind of, uh, a good example would be when he's described as like a bear, or what are the connotations of a bear? You might say in some sense it's kind of cuddly animal, but also, an, not that I've been cuddling many bears, but there's a real undercurrent of danger there, isn't there, with the bear? There's an undercurrent of violence. Lenny's also described as a, uh, similar to a horse, isn't he, in the way, is the way he drinks. Um, for me, horses are seen as uh, quite sort of um, strong, but not necessarily very intelligent animals, although I did say that to a class once and was absolutely uh, harangued by uh, some students who thought the horses were very intelligent. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not wishing to offend the horse community, so whatever you think, there's alternative interpretations. Uh, which brings us to, alternatively, it could be argued that, or whatever. Whew. So, there we are. That is pretty much what I've got to say about point, evidence, explain. Uh, how can I finish it off? Just to say, it's a really useful way, thing to get your head around, really useful for your, for your assessments. Don't see it as a straight jacket, but see it as a structure, which then helps you uh, write in sophisticated and exciting ways. Okay, right, off you go. Mm -hmm.